All right. Hello, hello. Oh, get my microphone pointing in the correct direction. Ah, hello, hello, hello. I'm going to wait a minute and get some people in here. There's a lot of live streams going on tonight. Hey, Pam, how you doing? Gnarly fish tanks, how's it going? Some people are trickling in. I hope everybody's doing great tonight. I uh, I realized after last week's live stream that I got to uh, really plan my hour correctly um, because it goes by really quick now. Now that I'm doing them uh, earlier in the evening, I feel more energetic to do it and I have a lot of stuff to talk about. And um, <clears throat> I did my list again for this week. Um, having the list really helps me uh, stay on task. And I got some random things to talk about. Um, I like to talk briefly about the company and products this week, um, things that are coming up with the company, news from the community, and some other random things. Um, I do have some bad news to talk about in more ways than one tonight. And um, I just got off of Haley's channel, um, Oddball Aquatics. She had uh, Joey, the king of DIY on there. And that was a good live stream. So um, I hope you guys saw that. If not, um, check it out later. It's uh, Oddball Aquatics. And um, she's one of my moderators and she's a good friend. William Jan Jansen, hello. Um, yes, there's bad news. Um, community news is bad. And I also ran into a substantial problem with shipping live fish um, last week. So that's to come. It's on my list. I am going to um, start this here in a second. Peplin Creek Aquatics, hello. Uh, Rumball's Fish Room, hello, hello. Um, I'm going to start off with um, just going to plug the 614 Botanicals. These are the alder cones. They have been actually selling fairly well. Um, I just released them last week. And I know Papa Shrimp just ordered some today. And they are on its way to him. And that's actually on my list. I want to thank Papa Shrimp. He is um, continually supporting me. In more ways than one, he places orders um, repeatedly. So he's a return customer. So I really appreciate his orders. But I also, after I met Papa Shrimp at Aquashella Chicago last year, and um, not too soon after I started my business, and I got to talk to him a lot about the business, and he's trying to start his own business. So he's been asking me questions. I'm trying to help him where I can. But, um, I like to run ideas that I have for my business across them. It's kind of like feedback, like, hey, do you think this is a good idea? This is a bad idea. Um, I originally brought on the ISTA breeder boxes, and after talking to them for a while, um, I decided to cancel that product just mainly because I don't like the flow rate of that box. It's just really slow. It's a trickle rate. So I ended up pulling that product. Um, I sold them out, and then I'm not bringing them back. I ended up replacing that product with the Phoenix version, which allows you to run air so you can get the trickle tr um, flow rate. But if you want higher flow rate, it comes with a little water pump. It will actually uh, move a decent amount of water through it. And I believe Papa Shrimp also bought one of those from me to try it out. Um, I actually just got a message from Papa Shrimp. Um, so... I just want to thank him for his repeated orders and support. The other stuff I want to talk about is I did bring on Repashi Foods. Um, I brought on five or six, and I was just going to name them off real quick. Um, Bottom Scratcher, Community Plus, Grub Pie, Morning Wood, <laughs> and um, Super Gold. Those are all in stock. I brought them in three different sizes. Um, I'm going to keep moving down the list so I can knock out my list and then we'll go to like the community, um, live chat here. Um, I do have a trans ship order in, so not a wholesale order, but an actual trans ship. So this is coming straight from the farms, um, of Odessa barbs. That was a custom order. Somebody wanted them. So I ordered in a lot of them. 
Um, Cardinal Tetras tank raised. Um, I think I ordered 200 and 200 or 250 of those. So I'm bringing those in and these should all be here. I'm thinking Tuesday and then um, blood fin Tetras. That was another order that somebody wanted. And if, if people want fish and I don't have them in stock, I can order them. Um, basically you just got to request what you're looking for. I tell you how much they are and if you want them, how many you want. And if it's enough, then it makes sense for me to order in a bunch because I have to order in bulk. And um, because if you know you only want two bloodfin tetras, it doesn't make sense for me to bring in a hundred of them um, just to sell two right off the rip. But if you want 10 of them or 15 of them, then I can work with that and put them into stock after they clear quarantine. So those are coming in transshipped. Hopefully Tuesday. Um, before the chat runs away from me, I wanted to see how everybody's doing. Daryl Deemer, how you doing, buddy? Uh, Bob's here. Hello, hello, GRB. Hope you guys are all doing great. Uh, Papa Shrimp's here. Um, I don't know if you just got in here, Papa Shrimp, but I was just talking about you. Um, William Jansen says, Colonel Tetris can be tricky to ship can go great, but can also have 50% deaths. So with the Cardinal Tetras, my original order, I did wholesale. Um, they kind of fizzled out after about two and a half weeks in quarantine. Um, I didn't know if it was a bad batch. So I reordered them and they all survived and I sold them all. I ordered them a third time and some of them died throughout the quarantine process, but I would say probably... I'd say probably nine out of 10, like 90% survived. Um, but the, I really should order more green neons because the last order of green neons, I didn't have a single death. Like they were doing very good and um, they clear quarantine. That batch clears, um, I think this week. I end up writing everything down. I was doing stuff on the tank with Sharpies, but because I'm moving stuff around so much, it just didn't make sense. So I wrote everything down on paper, and then I'm going to make a uh, Excel spreadsheet. That way I can just edit it real quick. I can use my iPad in the fish room and keep track of um, arrival dates and quarantine ending. And also keep other notes like, you know, how much am I dosing meds? What dates um, are things, you know, doing well or not? Um, so, yeah. Um, let me see. Uh, William says, um, then keep that wholesaler, great Tetras. Um, here it's a lot of if it goes well or not. Yeah, I mean, with this wholesaler, it's it's been positive. Their customer service is really great. Um, I've had some orders. Um, it's mainly been guppies. Um, something that I've always uh, treat, everything is treated for ick, whether or not it has it for its first week here. Um, but guppies are the only ones I have to continually treat after week one. Um, but I, I got to give props and this might sound, um, biased because I sell it, but Hikari Ickex, um, has like, I've had a hundred percent success rate rate with it so far. I mean, I've only been importing fish since December, so we're going on three months now and, um, but 100% success rate. As soon as I see Ick, I use the Hikari Ick X and um, it's gone. I mean, it, it works really well. The only thing I changed is I've been this last order wholesale, like um, hard goods order. I ended up ordering a bunch of the pond strength Hikari. Um, it's more concentrated because I, I'm blowing through the 16 ounce bottles that I sell. Um, I buy it by the case um, for the website and then I'll pull from inventory if I need it for the fish room. And um, I've been blowing through it with so many tanks and the imports that um, I end up switching to the pond strength. And it's a five to one ratio. It's more expensive, but it's basically five bottles in one as far as treatment goes. Uh, Tiffany White's here. Hello. I watched your brine shrimp egg video. It's pretty good. Um, I liked it. And actually, I messaged you about it, or I maybe commented on it, about if that light, that desk lamp you use, um, if that's like an LED or one of those CC, 
L C C F L C F Ls, whatever they're called. Um, switch it to the old school iridescent bulbs. Um, cause they give off a lot of heat and use that cause that will help warm up your water, which will, um, increase your hatch time. Um, I typically have hatch rates, um, high hatch rates and everything's usually within 24 hours. So that'd be like, at least in my experience, my tip. Um, Oh, Hey, Haley's here. Um, Haley, I was talking about you at the beginning of the stream. Um, talking about your live stream with Joey and i um, glad you finally, I know you've been talking about that for months and months and months and I'm glad that you were able to get that done. So that that's good. Um, news from the community. So there's a, just a couple of things I want to talk about. And uh, unfortunately these aren't really great news from the community. Um, first thing would be kind of countrywide. Um, I'm sure everybody knows that Nashville, Tennessee got hit with tornadoes. Um, the article I read today said it's confirmed 25 deaths and five of those were kids under 13. So if, you know, everybody can keep those people in your prayers, um, there's still 22 people missing as of this morning. So I just want to, you know, keep them in my uh, prayers tonight that the 22 people are found um, safe and can return home. Um, the other thing I want to mention is uh, Susan Core, which is SLC Aquatics. Um, she is shutting down her fish room, and she breeds um, a lot of different kinds of guppies. She has a ton of really healthy plants, but um, some unfortunate events um, in her personal life has caused her to have to move. Um, I believe she's moving to help her mother, and... Um, she needs to sell all of her fish room. So um, if you guys can help her out with buying some of her fish, um, they are listed on our website. It's slcaquatics.org. And um, her plants look awesome. They, you can tell that um, they've been well cared for for a long time. They're, they're very hardy looking. And um, some of her guppies look really nice. So I'm going to probably reach out to her um, probably in a week or two and see if there's anything left that I can pick up from her. So let me talk about the bad news um, that involves myself and I guess the business. But um, I had a big order. Um, I don't want to say a big order. A decent order from first time customer that was referred to me by Ohio fish rescue. Um, this is why I do the discounts. They use the Ohio fish rescue discount code, which they promote in their live streams, which I really appreciate. So if they're watching, thank you guys for um, help promoting me. Um, if you're not a fan or subscribe to them, uh, check them out. It's the, um, Ohio fish rescue. I'm sure you just search Ohio fish rescue and it'll pop up. But, um, so they sent a customer my way. He placed an order for, um, CPDs, shrimp, and, um, guppies. He also bought a breeder box, one of the Phoenix breeder boxes. Because he placed, like, two sets of orders, one to hard goods and one to live goods, it charged him for the live goods, and he got the free shipping on the hard goods, and actually, I got to look at that because it was supposed to be like $9.99 for shipping unless you spend the $49.99 and you get it free. But because it grouped as one big order, it charged them the fish shipping and then just gave them free shipping, which which is fine. Um, but it really needs to be fixed to where like if somebody bought something that can't fit, fit in a fish box or ship with fish. Um, it needs to be separate. So anyways, he places the order. Um, I ship out fish on Wednesdays and I ship priority mail. Never have issues. Um, everything has been a hundred percent success rate, you know, no, no problems at all. So I ship it out Wednesday and, and he ordered it like the previous week. I think it was that previous Friday or something. I emailed him said, Hey, just so you know, everything ships out on Wednesdays. Totally cool with it. No problem. Uh, ship out his fish on Wednesday and I, I hand deliver everything to my local post office. Um, they, they 
can come to my house to pick up orders, but I would rather go and put it in their hands. That way I know it's there, especially with live fish. Um, that way I don't have to worry about sitting on a truck or anything until it gets back to the depot. But um, they know me. I'm there every single day, um, six days a week. And so I, I drop it off. The next day, he emails me and asks if it's shipped because the tracking says I haven't even delivered it yet. So I pulled the tracking number and it says that I created the label, but that's it. And I, I told him, I was like, yeah, I dropped it off last night. Um, so that was like Thursday morning. So Thursday evening, um, the tracking still didn't update. And so when I went in Thursday evening to do my orders, um, my order drop off, um, I asked the lady, I was like, Hey, like this tracking number doesn't show up. She's like, yeah, like it was, you know, your live fish. Cause I write live fish on all sides of the boxes. And uh, she's like, yeah, I remember, um, you know, moving that myself. So she types in the tracking number, no updates. It just shows that I printed a label. So I'm like, this happened like once or twice before. And like, it'll update like when it gets delivered, which kind of sucks. I don't know. It's just like a bug in the system, but, um, Anyways, so I ship it out Wednesday night, and he's in Virginia. I'm in Ohio. I told him, I was like, I expect it maybe in a day, if not two days tops. Uh, pretty much anything I ship. Uh, everything in Ohio shows up next day, and then surrounding states, depending on where it's in the state, is sometimes this next day, if not day two. Um, so day two would have been Friday. Friday comes nothing. Saturday comes nothing. I'm in constant contact with them. I was like, man, like it should have been there Friday, like for sure Saturday. Like priority mail could take up to three days technically. I'm like, it'll be there Saturday. Saturday comes, doesn't have the box. And I'm like, well, they're not going to deliver it on Sunday. So I'm like, now it's going to be Monday. I'm like, these fish have been in the box since Wednesday. So I prepped them. I said, you know, unfortunately, like no matter how well I, I package them, you know, I insulate them, heat packs. These were all in breather bags. Um, like no matter how well it's packed, I'm like, I don't think they're going to make it till Monday. It's a long time to be in a bag. And I'm like, well, uh, like at least they're in breather bags, but I'm worried about the heat. Um, so I'm sorry, let me adjust this chair. So I, I, I told him, I was like, you know, just so you know, when they show up, you know, they're probably not going to make it. Um, if that's the case, I will reship um, all your fish. Um, I didn't say I was going to refund them. I was like, I'll replace it. I'll eat the shipping, I'll eat the cost of all the fish. Baby. It's a long thread. Okay. Okay. So he says, Stephen, um, actually, so I emailed him first. Monday at 2 30 p.m., I checked the tracking and it showed that it was delivered. So the tracking finally updated, said it was delivered, but there's no history from where it left my hands to like when it got to him. It showed it was delivered at a certain time. I said, I see how the tracking number finally updated and shows delivered. How did it go? He responded back uh, 10 minutes later. He said, not good. The box was completely crushed and leaking. The box was soaked so bad they delivered it in one of those white plastic mail tubes. Um, I think that must be tubs. Upon opening the box, the guppy bag was intact, but they were all dead. Uh, the bag of shrimp was leaked on. It says one bag of shrimp was leaked on. They were all dead. That was the CPDs. And the second bag of shrimp, um, the blues, which he ordered my um, blue dreams, were all alive. And, I temper and I'm temperature acclimating them now. They look lively, and I think they might live. The breeder box had been crushed, and one end uh, busted out. I took pictures on my iPhone and emailed them to me, but they have not got here yet. As soon as they do, I will send them to you. I, he didn't send them to me. I didn't need them. Um, he said, the male lady says she did not know where the damage occurred. And that's the way they arrived. 
Um, he said he would send an email with pictures. So basically, the box got crushed, and the breeder it got crushed hard enough that it blew the breeder box apart, and it blew one of the bags open. Now, here's what's crazy. So with when I ship, if I ship in regular fish bags, I double bag them. If I ship in breather bags, I bag the box because breather bags work with oxygen. So I don't, you don't put a double bag, you don't double bag breather bags and you don't put them in another plastic bag. So I, I bag like the box and then put the um, breather bags inside that. So it got crushed enough to where it blew out the box and then it um, ripped one of the breather bags. And that's why the box is wet. Um, as far as I know, all of the blue dreams were fine. Um, so they did, what would that have been? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, six days in there, and they were fine. I ship all my shrimp with um, moss. That gives them something to hold on. Um, if you ever shrimp, if you ever shrimp, if you ever ship shrimp, they need to hang on to something in the shipping bag. Um, a lot of people will do like little net um, mesh nets. Um, I like to use moss because it's natural. Um, it's kind of a bonus too. So I always use Christmas moss. So you can take that little piece of Christmas moss that I have in there and you can, um, grow it out. Um, but I just like having natural moss in there for them to hold on to. So that order minus the blue dreams was a complete loss. So I had to, I reshipped them, um, all the stuff that dies. So I reshipped them, the guppies and the CPDs and the breeder box. So I shipped out the breeder box separate. So now I'm out shipping on that breeder box plus another breeder box. Um, and then I shipped out the CPDs and the guppies separate. And that was in a different box. So I lost a ton of money on that order, um, which really sucks. Um, it really sucks that all those fish died because somewhere along the line, somebody crushed the shit out of that box. Um you know, and what really sucks is that it's it's clearly labeled live fish. No matter what, no matter which way you're holding that box, it says live fish across it, and um, somebody just didn't care. So that really sucks. And it's not like they dropped the box off the truck; like a big box had to be set on top of it to crush it, like it did. So that really sucks. Um, lost a ton of money on that. Um, Profits, like when it's something like that, prof, profit margin doesn't make up for, I mean, just shipping costs of shipping two more boxes ate all the, the profit margin on that order to begin with. And then minus the cost of another breeder box and, you know, the fish and heat packs and all that stuff like, um, you know, Ohio and Virginia. Um, but what's awesome is, you know, he, you know, I told him, I was like, I hope this doesn't, you know, being a first time customer, I was like, hope this doesn't like taint your idea of my company like i'm replacing her and he said like you know he doesn't hold me accountable at all and um he ended up placing another order um, with me he's actually the guy that's getting the odessa barbs so i'm um, bringing out odessa barbs for him so I, I appreciate him you know returning and being a, a repeat customer um because that's my goal my goal is to have repeat customers especially when i can interact with them and you know get to know them more and try to help them grow their hobby and provide them with the products that they need. So that was, that's my bad news. You know, my personal, I got affected by that. Um, so I've been dealing with that for the last week. I believe his fish land tomorrow. And um, once I hear that they are a okay, then I can kind of rest easy that I put that fire out and um, just move on. Um, so there's only one thing left I really want to talk about and I want to check, um, check on the chat real quick and see what everybody's up to. Uh, Pam says, dang it. I've been sick the last few days and totally missed that news. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming you're talking about Nashville. So it's, um, it, since you didn't hear, um, downtown Nashville got hit with a tornado. So there was a lot of damage. Uh, Mickey M says, hi, Steven and all lurking before sleeping. 
Well, I hope you uh, get some good night's sleep tonight. <laughs> William says, uh, sleeping's for weaklings. You know, I Mondays, I'm, I can tell I'm getting old because Mondays, I think I'm in bed like by 9 o'clock now. I'm just so busy with everything. And I have um, LRB was here on Friday, and he did his live stream from my house. And Haley was here. And I just got in wholesale orders, and I was hoping Haley would unbox it and inventory everything for me, but she didn't. She just played with Charlotte the whole time, and um, so I've been doing that. There's boxes everywhere of trying to get stuff out, and I've now expanded. I didn't plan on leaving this room with the business, but now I'm in the room next door to this one uh, with more products. And eventually, like, I hope I can scale up to where my dream would be to have, like, an office space with a warehouse attached so I can do all my fish and products out of an actual office and then not work on cars the rest of my life. But um, I'm, I'm working towards it. Um, so William asks, is there any type of insurance by a delivery company? Okay, so there's priority comes with. $50 insurance. The problem I ran into is that tracking number didn't show I even like gave them the package. So that's where I'm at with insurance. Um, and I'm at the point where I just don't even want to fight with them. Um, I just want to kind of like move forward and put that behind me and um, keep doing what I can to um, provide the best service I can to my customers. And um, I feel like I'm doing that by, re you know, replacing everything, eating all the costs. And I just know that, you know, maybe I have a, that customer for life now. I mean, he already placed a second order. So I'm uh, especially grateful for that. GRB said Odessa barbs are awesome. Stunning little fish. So I've actually never kept Odessa barbs. Um, I think I ordered... Uh, I think it's a hundred. I think the Cardinals were two fifty. Odessa's were a hundred, and I think um, the Bloodfins might have been one hundred and fifty. But um, yeah, so I, I I bought the mass quantity so that way, you know, if there's deaths from shipping, if they don't make it to quarantine, if out of a hundred fish, if fifty end up super hardy, and um, I know we'll give no one problems, then you know I'll be happy with that. Um, there's always going to be losses right off the rip. Hopefully it's minimal. You know, I don't want any losses, but um, just the way that the the whole business goes, that there's going to be some losses. Uh, Fishy Fun 57. How long can Neo Shrimp last in shipping in average temps? So I ship with 72-hour heat packs. And those fish were in there for six days. So, granted, I don't, it's a quality heat pack that pretty much everybody uses. It's kind of like the standard. Um, there's no guarantee, though. Like, obviously, I, I don't know. I know they come in warm. Most times, people are like, yeah, the heat packs are still warm. Um, you never know if the heat pack will stop heating after. 48 hours after 36 hours, you know, the heat packs use oxygen to do their chemical reaction. Like, so that's why you don't want to put them in a sealed bag because they, if they're going to use oxygen, especially with breather bags, so breather bags, ex, you know, exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide. Well, if you have that in a sealed second bag with a heat pack, that heat pack's going to use oxygen. So in my head, I'm like, well, I don't want to suck any oxygen out of that, you know, that shipping bag. So most of the times that heat pack will go on the outside of the bag. Um, unless I ship with, um, I like to repurpose materials and I'll use like Kroger, like grocery bags. If you guys don't have a Kroger, it's a grocery store, the plastic grocery bag. I like to use those as my secondary barrier. Um, because instead of going in the trash can, I feel like I can at least repurpose, repurpose it for one more use um, before it ends up in the trash. 
And I do uh, can't see it behind this tank. There's a there's a big box right here. I save all the air those air shipping bags that people put in um, boxes like we order from Amazon. Those those padding packs. I save all those. I don't throw those out because um, I rather repurpose them, reuse them to ship out hard goods. Um, so it's saving the plastic from going directly from my house into the landfill. At least I could get one more use out of it. And then, you know, the customer can either reuse it, repurpose it, or they can recycle or, or trash it. But as far as Neos, the longest now has been this order and they were in a breather bag for six days. Um, I don't know. I don't think there's a great, great way to answer that question. Um, I feel like that's going to be like somebody that had a mishap where like a box got lost in the mail for a few weeks and like they sh finally showed up and maybe they were alive. No idea. Um, yeah, I, I always ship priority mail, but with this instance, they were in a box for six days and they all survived. It probably also depends on how hardy the shrimp are. Um, these blues were originally from Flip Aquatics. I have a wholesale account with them, um, so I can order in his shrimp. I originally order in, ordered in his shrimp, and then I kept them for a few months before I listed them for sale, and they ended up breeding for me. And I sell off the juveniles. Um, I don't sell off the adults, um, mainly because the juveniles seem to ship better. They're tank bred instead of imported. So every time they, they breed in a tank, they're getting uh, hardier and hardier. So I like to send off the hardier version. Then with an adult shrimp, you really never know how long they're going to survive, like how long their, their lifespan is going to be. So if you ship them, sure, the big adults look nice, but if they are naturally going to die in three months, would you rather have a shrimp that dies in three months for the amount of money you're paying or have one that's going to last you two years and grow to adult size pretty quickly? So that's the way I look at it. So I always shrimp, sh shrimp. I always ship shrimp um, in a juvenile size. Let me see. <sighs> uh, Pat's fish thinks he said, I've heard about that. I've also seen people using floating plants for that purpose as well. I'm assuming you're talking about for shrimp to hang on to. Um, in Massachusetts, it seems really easy on one of my shrimp tanks out in the fish room. I have a breeder box on the front that has Christmas moss in it. And that allows me to just pop the lid and I can pull moss out. And that's like one of my favorite uses for a breeder box is for moss especially in my case where I'm using it to ship out shrimp. Um, I don't have to dig into a tank for it. It's just sitting there in a box right on front of the tank. Um, I'm not disturbing any livestock because that's the only thing in that breeder box is moss and um, makes it super easy uh, to pull uh, moss out. And I have a 20 gallon long full of moss. I had a bare 20 in my flow through rack i end up putting a, a clump of moss in it and now it's like taking over the whole tank so i don't know i just love moss it's great for a lot of things i'm just I'm kind of tired tonight i don't have any decaf coffee I, I feel like that would pep me up a little bit but um Uh, Mickey M says it's 2.28 in the morning over here. Where are you at? It's uh, 8.30 p.m. here. Pat's Fish Tanks also is at 2.28. I mean, obviously, this was a few minutes ago. Okay, so, all right, so there we go. William says, Stephen, Mickey M, and myself are... Countryman, Sweden. Wow. So that's awesome. I didn't know I had people from Sweden that were following me. Thanks. That's pretty sweet. I wish, like, there was an app that would have, like, um, I guess it would be Map of the World. I think of the Map of the States, but Map of the World. And especially for my shipping, um, 
not necessarily of the world, but for the states, it would be cool if it would show like pin everywhere I ship across the United States. Um, I've shipped to most states. I know I have not shipped to um, Alaska yet. I ship to Hawaii um, quite often, actually. I would say at least a package a month goes to Hawaii, which was kind of cool. I saw a lot of my super glue, which is that right there um, to Hawaii. Uh, Pat said, my mate is focused on shrimp only. The thing is here, we cannot legally send live animals. So you just ship it without any label. And usually shipment takes up to eight to 10 days. Okay. Yeah. I mean, shrimp, shrimp are pretty good. I mean, they're, they're so small. It's not like they're producing a ton of waste. So I feel like, especially like in a breather bag, um, they could do like a, a decent amount of time, but I don't want to like tell anybody to ship shrimp in the snail mail and then have them die on them. Um, but I, I feel like shrimp would probably be the hardiest. Okay. So that makes sense. So, uh, I'm assuming it's Mickey M right. Or am I like completely butchering how th I'm supposed to be saying that? Or is this supposed to be like Mickem? Uh, but, um, anyways, he said, he or she, um, U.S. fish tubers are so good for us night lurkers on the other side of the pond. So I didn't really think about that. So that does make sense. As I know, at 2.30, I'm sawing logs. And there was a lot going on. So I, I sent out a few orders tonight after work. And um, Havana decided to make a break for it. And she blew out the screen on my front window and went after the postman. So that was um, very embarrassing and very uh, angering. I was really, really upset with her. Um, it's, today was the first day I've opened the windows to the house. And what's dumb is I opened the window, and it's a sliding window, and then there was a screen. And she was standing in the window just kind of looking at everything, and I thought, I don't, I hope she doesn't like try to go through the window and sure as shit. She just bam. Like I happened to be changing water on my Ram's horn tank in the family room where that window is. And I heard the, the bam and I look up and all I saw were her back feet out the window. Like she was gone. And all of a sudden I heard somebody screaming. So I was like, Oh shit. What just happened? So I opened the door and there's my mailman on his back. And Havana was like over here. I'm like, what happened? And he's like, the dog attacked me. I was like, oh my God. Like Havana is like the most awesome dog. I love her so much. And, but she's like super protective of the house. I think last, last year I was talking about having my, uh, I have a security system, but I'm like, you know, if anybody tried to break in this house, they'd be dumb because Havana would eat them. Well, so I have cameras. So I pull up the camera and when the guy like went to the ring, the doorbell, she took off like through the screen. Well, he panicked and backstepped, tripped and fell. And then um, Havana ran straight to him and it looked like he, she hit his arm and then she ran off. So like, luckily she didn't bite him or anything like that. But um, here she is now. She must've hurt me. So I'm out there yelling at her to come inside. Well, this one, decide to go through the window too. So as I'm trying to grab the one dog, Charlotte comes barreling out through the window. So now I have two dogs in the front yard. I have a postman laying on his back. I'm just like, I was like, Oh my God, like this is terrible. I'm about to get sued. I don't like, I don't know what's going on. See so when he said that she attacked him, I thought like she bit the sh you know shit out of his arm. But once I watched the video, I'm like, okay, it's, it was bad. Like anybody that sees a dog running after a postman, like, uh, but like you can see like sh he fell and she ran like his arm and then ran back off. Um, and he ended up being fine. And, uh, yeah, I was apologizing to him. Like, I'm so sorry. And, um, uh, so yeah. 
And he was like, well, have a good night. I was like, you too. Um, but I put the screen back up, but now I just, I'm not going to open the front window. I guess I'll only open up the windows to the back of the house. But yeah, so that that's what happened after work. I started unboxing more products. I still got to do wire changes on the import tanks. So I'm going to do that after this live stream, and then I'll probably hit the shower and go to bed. Uh, let me catch up. Where did I go? Do, 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 do. Um, Mickey said our wholesaler uses pie pieces of cut net for delivery of shrimps. Uh, same for you, Stephen. So most wholesalers use the net stuff. Um, I use Moss, but uh, yeah, most, most of the wholesalers, at least the wholesalers I bought from use nets because that's most cost effective thing to ship them with. I don't know if like Moss, how well Moss pulls nitrates out of the water, but I feel like that could be also a benefit, but there's such a small amount of, um, Moss in there, I, I doubt it really has any effect on it, but you know, you, I guess you never know. Pat says, the record I know is 14 days and they made it. I ship a lot of snails. Breather bags are an amazing invention. Yeah, the only thing with breather bags is, so I, I, brought, I buy it like in a case and they have like, uh, I think it's like four different sizes and two of them come in two different thicknesses. And it, they just feel so sketchy because they're kind of like, I don't know, like a soft plastic. Um, so, I, you know, I always fear that they could tear. And I've never had an issue up until that box got crushed. Um, I definitely feel safer shipping in a, a regular plastic bag. Papa Shrimp says, <laughs> I might have to get some carnal tetras from you. I will uh, hook you up, buddy. Uh, Bob says, hold on to the tape. Post offices take dogs very seriously. Yes. I mean, I already downloaded it to my phone, so I have it. Um, luckily, there wasn't like a bite or anything. So, you know, I'm just fingers crossed. Because the worst part is it'd be one thing if like someone was like, oh, my, I, I got attacked by a, a golden retriever or, you know, some cuddly dog. But when it's a, she's American um, Staffordshire Terrier, a pit bull. Um, people lose their minds immediately. So, you know, it's always, she's like the best dog I've ever had, but she's, she's very protective of the house, which is, that's what she was doing. But, you know, it just, they get such a bad rap for being like fighting dogs and all that stuff that, you know, I just, I didn't want this kind of situation to ever happen. And it happened. Uh, Papa Shrimp says, sounds like a rough week. Sorry to hear it's been a crazy week, and I've been so busy with work and doing all this stuff that it's just, it makes my weeks go by quick, but there's definitely some stress. <laughs> Dang it, I was on top chat. Yep, that happens. Uh, S, uh, William says, at SC, may I ask about how much did you have to spend slash cost to launch your business? So it's kind of a hard, hard question to answer. So to start a business is, it's not that expensive to get the LLC. Um, it's not that expensive. What's expensive is keeping inventory. So there's people that do. Uh, I, w I guess it would be drop shipping where you basically give them money and then they order it and then have that company ship it to them. Um, there's also people that do the same thing with fish and shrimp. You basically pay them for the fish, then they order it and then ship it right out. I, on the other hand, wanted to be in control of everything start to finish as far as the process of somebody buying it from me. 
So originally I had the idea like, oh man, if I drop ship, then I can have massive amount of products and not have to have the inventory. But the problem with that is that I didn't want is I didn't want to rely on another company to make sure products are sent out correctly, to make sure they're packaged correctly. So before I, I officially launched, I decided to make sure I keep my hands on all the products. So there's a not a, there's not a lot of money in starting it as far as like the business side of like legal stuff. There is a crap ton of money in products. Um, I don't know. I'm sure I can run a report of overall inventory. Um, there's probably, if I had to guess, I probably have, I mean, I don't even, I don't even know if I can guess. Sitting here that's inventoried into the system, I still have boxes that I need to pull out. There's probably between eight to ten thousand dollars in inventory sitting here um so I, I guess it depends on what kind of business you're trying to do if you're trying to do hard goods you know selling products you know i guess you guys see this stuff you don't see like this whole wall is covered in products there's products on this wall sealing the floor uh this desk is a u desk it's um i forget what it is five feet maybe six feet long it's got products all across the top and then now I got products in the other bedroom. Um, there's a lot. Um, I find it fun doing ordering and like sourcing new products. Like I enjoy that. I think ideally, like if, if I could, you know, scale to where I could do this for a living full time, I would love to be the guy that does like ordering of new products, testing of new products and letting somebody else run the business as far as like shipping and stuff like that. But, um, you know, with having products, there's a lot of money in getting those products, getting those assets for the company. Uh, Pat says almost 3 AM and my time has come. Well, we'll see you, Pat. Have a, a good night. 3 AM. Uh, Mickey M says breather bags are nice for small single fish without any hard fin spines. Okay. As long as you don't put any box pack tight with paper towels, etc. Um, bags must have, have to be possible to breathe. Yeah. So here's a van. She's trying to crawl in here. Um, yeah. So I use breather bags for shrimp and then the nano fish and guppies. Corydoras all go into regular fish bags. Um, and then the Congo Tetras, just because they're bigger, um, they're kind of like little brutes. So I don't want them in a breather bag, so I put them in a standard bag. Uh, same with like Plecos. But I need to buy... So here's one thing I did buy for the company this week, and I think it comes possibly tomorrow. I ordered a foam cutter. So I've been cutting, I have like a handheld foam cutter, but it only cuts like maybe six inch wide um, widths. And I needed like a table so I can cut these. I buy the sheets, like four foot by eight foot sheets of styrofoam to line my boxes. And um, I really needed a table. So I ordered one um, to help speed up the process of cutting foam. Cause that's the thing I hate the most about shipping fish is cutting all the styrofoam for the top, bottom, and sides. It's very time consuming. If you don't have a hot uh, knife, um, it uh, it just takes forever and it makes a mess. Uh, Royal Fish Aquatics, where did you get your Congo Tetris from? Um, I wholesale them in, and or um, they're also on the transship list. They're not like from a specific company online. It's through a wholesaler. Uh, let me see. Do, do, do. Uh, Bob says, awesome, Stephen. My friends went through a similar thing and they were going to take the dog away from them. Chattanooga. 
yeah, that's like my biggest fear is something like that would happen. And um, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to allow it. Uh, Papa Sherman says, got to run, putting a 125 in for a friend of mine's daughter who has nine tanks already. Love seeing next generation fish keepers. I will try to get some video. Good night, all. See you, Jerry. Have a good night. And the 125 sounds amazing. Royal Fish Aquatics says, I breed them by the thousands. Well, I'm assuming you sell them, right? Um... If you do sell them or if you're interested in selling them, shoot me an email because I would rather buy them from a hobbyist than a wholesaler as long – here's the, uh, the, the asterisk. As long as the price makes sense for the business. Um, I mentioned that last live stream with people asking or talking about buying from hobbyists. I would prefer to buy from hobbyists, but most hobbyists um, want to sell at retail – costs and as a business owner i can't buy your fish at retail cost um because i have to make a profit um that's how business works papa shrimp says please remember to hit the like button yes if you want to um if you're not subscribed go ahead and hit that subscribe button Ooh, i cannot talk this is the tired hitting me hard um, hit the subscribe button if you would. I have never tried breather bags for Daniels um, or other easily stressed fish. I guess they're too panky. Um, so I have shipped um, zebra Daniels with them. That's the only one I've shipped with breather bags. And I didn't have an issue with the zebra Daniels. Um, my zebras, they're out of quarantine um i have fed them pretty heavily and uh, too heavily um lucas was here friday doing his live stream and after the live stream we did water changes on my racks um because i was over i overfeed on purpose because with um having the quarries in the bottom i want food to hit <clears throat> losing my voice <clears throat> i want the food to hit the bottom um i water change about every day and um, so I, I was never really too concerned with overfeeding, um, just mainly because the extra food hits the bottom. The quarries will be able to eat what they want. And if there was anything left over, it gets sucked out and changed out the next day with new water anyways. Um, Lucas was here and um, advised me not to do that and to make sure that there's you know no extra food sitting there overnight. So he's got way more experience than experience than me especially with the amount of tanks he has. So I took his um, advice and um, I cut back the feeding on him. Local fish stores here add two, 200 to 300% on hard stuff and three to 500 on live fish. That's uh 500%. That's insane. Um, yeah. My margins are way lower um, mainly because e-commerce, I don't have the overhead of paying for rent. If I had to pay for a building, um, my pricing would change. Um, there's no way that I could afford at my current volume of orders to afford a building. Um, that's, that's cra crazy markup. If I could continue doing the same volume I am just right now at 500% markup, I'd have a building. But, I mean, that's why it's a LFS, but um, that seems really, really steep. And what's, what's the business side of me, what I like is, you know, with having wholesale fish lists, the transship fish lists, plant order lists, and, you know, with products, seeing roughly what, these other stores are paying for these items. Now there's other stores that buy direct and also buy, I want to say they have deals where they can, you know, get better rates if they buy, you know, a ton more. Um, I, I can see what stores pay basically for the products that they're selling. And 
it's kind of twofold though. Like I can see like, Hey, like I know they're making $20 a pop on that. They sell. But then I see stores on eBay that they're losing money by the time that they're paying eBay fees. Cause eBay's taking out nine and a half percent of your sale. And then you got to pay for shipping on top of that. And you got to pay for PayPal. eBay is terrible because you're getting hit that 9%. You're getting hit with the PayPal fee and then you're shipping. There's people losing money on eBay selling stuff. And, um, so I get to see both sides of that. And I, I, I can tell when something's a really good deal. Um, two of the deals I can think of off the top of my head. Petco had Fluval FX6s for, I think it was, if, if anybody can remember, I think FX6 retail is, what are they? I think retail, like retail, re, like MSRP is like 400 bucks. I think a lot of people will sell them for like 300 to 325 and Petco had it, I think, for like 250 or even less. And I was like, well, that's like under the cost of what I even buy it for. And then um, these dogs into mischief. Um, then the sale, I even went to like three Petcos because I wanted to buy them. So Petco had Fluval Aqua Skies, which are... I have one of them. I bought one just to try them out, and I, I like it. It's the cheaper version of a 3.0. It's not as powerful. Um, it's smaller, but it does really well for medium to low um, light requirement plants. Um, they had them for like 25 bucks. I think somebody posted on the our uh, fish club the receipt. It was like a four-foot light for like 25 bucks after tax. Like they, I don't even know how much money they lost selling those. Um, but all the stores sold out locally. I'm assuming they're probably not carrying them anymore. So it was like, let's get rid of this inventory. But I mean, even at $50, they would have been a steal. But anyways, um, let's see. Mickey says never feed fish before shipping rest products. Rest products, feces, and water will result in killing the fish. Yes, that's correct. So you basically um, quarantine the fish out before shipping them to clear out their um, dige digestive tracts. Um, I have an LFS who will reduce price if customer picks up the order when arriving from the wholesaler, same day, night. Um, I mean, I would probably, I would probably do that as well if, because then I don't have to quarantine a fish. Cause if I'm quarantining for 30 days, they all get the med trio. So I'm spending money on medications. I'm feeding them for 30 days. So it would make sense as a business to cut a deal to buy fish and then just get rid of them for sure. Um, even the special orders that are coming in on Tuesday, the Odessa barbs that were ordered for one guy and the blood fins for another, those are still going into quarantine. They probably won't get a full 30 day quarantine, but they will at least get a round of the med trio. Um, they all get treated with Marison general cure and ick. Oh, that's another product. I, now that I'm talking about the end of the live stream where people are, are probably starting to file out. Um, I picked up Fritz Paraclean, Paracleanse and um, expel P um, I saw Aquarian Co-op was talking about it, and it's a cheaper version of Marison. So I brought it on, and I will be switching over to that once um, my fish room stock goes out. Um, this stock is separate from the fish room as far as medications go. But all right, I think Dan is... Does anybody know if Dan's fish has gone live yet? Um, he typically is after me on Wednesdays. Oh, I guess the last thing I'll mention is on my list. I didn't even talk about vacation. So I am taking a vacation April 1st through the 6th. It's like a Wednesday to Sunday. So any orders during that time will not ship out until Monday. 
Um, this is an actual vacation. I'm going to Florida. Um, my parents have a house down there and, um, I think they've had that house for like three or four years now. Uh, they have a house here and a house in Florida and I've yet to go see the house or visit them while they're down there. And, um, so I just today on a, a whim, I decided, Hey, I'm gonna go check them out. So I will be in Florida. I might take, I don't know yet. I might take my laptop and do a live stream Wednesday from down there. Or it might not be Wednesday. It might be like some other time during the week or weekend. And I might do a live stream from down there. I don't know yet. It's going to depend on um, a lot of things. But I wouldn't mind doing a live stream just to hang out with you guys. Nothing business related since it is vacation. But um, maybe poolside or on the beach or something. I'll do a live stream. But we'll see. And um, But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I bought my ticket today. Super cheap, $105 round trip from Ohio to Florida. So I was like, why not? Let's do it. Um, I'll be in the Fort Myers area, so Gulf Coast. Um, I might try to – I'll probably be doing a bunch of things with them, but if I get time, maybe I'll uh, try to do some wild fishing. Maybe I, I know there's like cichlids and stuff down in the um, canals and stuff in the ponds. So I might try to see if I can catch some wild plecos or cichlids. Um, oh, Mike, I saw a message from you earlier, and I didn't mean to ignore you. I, th I, I read it. Where in Columbus are you located? I'm located in Gehanna. Um, and you asked if I'm going to the fish auction on the 22nd. And I know that's in my calendar. Uh, yes, I will be going to the fish auction. It's a Sunday, so I will be there. Uh, do 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 do. JRB says bargain affair. Uh, Mickey says fish can survive several weeks without food. Yeah, that's another reason why I do my 30 day quarantine is because it really bulks up the fish before shipping anyways. My, these Daniels, I'm telling you, these things are a little, they're little piggies. They are like, once I started importing, they were the first fish I imported. And it's the first time I ever kept a zebra Daniel, but they're, they're fun to watch. They're, they're very active. And they come straight up to the front of the tank as soon as I walk out there. And, like, they're very quick on eating. I feel like I will eventually tear down my 55-gallon shrimp tanks. It was kind of like one of those things where I needed somewhere to put shrimp, and those tanks were open. And now I'm like, I don't know why I did that, because a 55 is terrible for a shrimp tank. Um, the footprint's good. The height is terrible. Um, so I think when those 55s... I was trying to debate what to do with the 55s. I think I might actually just build a steel stand, a steel stand, double stack them and put them in my family room and do some scaping with them. And get, I, I kind of want more display tanks. Um, but we'll see. Uh, Pam says, vacations are a good thing. I hope you have a wonderful time. I hope so, too. Um, a co-worker was like, don't get the coronavirus. And I was like, I'd even think about that with traveling. Um, so hopefully knock on wood, I don't get sick from anybody because there's always a ton of germs on an airplane because you're stuck in that confined space. Uh, William say add floating plants. So I have, um, lily pads, dwarf aquarium lily in it. So it's got the floating pads. And they, they do get on it. It's just, I don't know, the between that and the bottom, it's not much space. I think if the tanks were, like, hardscaped and, like, there was more surface area. But um, it's just the blues are doing great. The reds are, they're not thriving in that tank yet. They're in there, but the, the blues are really, the blue is actually a green water tank. It sits underneath the window, and that window was the blinds were opening and it just, I don't know if that had anything to do with the green water, but it's full on green water and they've just been thriving with that. Green water is great. 
Um, aesthetically, it's not because you can't see anything in the tank because it's so thick. But um, Lucas was talking about, and he said that green water will get down the substrate and the fish or the fish, the shrimp will eat off the substrate and, you know, they get more nutrients from it. So, yeah, they're doing great. The blues. People your age aren't getting really sick for the most part. <laughs> it's old people like me that have to worry. Dan is live. All right. So, all right, guys, Dan's live. So I'm I'm going to move over to the stream. I'm going to go out and put him on the TV so that way I can listen to him while I do my wire changes. Thank you, everybody, for swinging by uh, yet again this week. And I will see you next week, hopefully. And um, everybody, have a great night. I know some of you are up. I don't even know what time it is now, after 3 a.m. Uh, so thanks for hanging in there with me. But uh, I'll see you guys next time. Uh, thanks, William and Mickey M. It was good talking to you guys and everybody else. Um, Mike, I see your message, Mike. And um, he bought his rainbow fish. I didn't even know he had his rainbow fish at, with him. Um, he does have good stuff. Um I don't think he would wholesale his fish out. I really don't. Uh, it'd be cool. I would I would sell his rainbow fish. I know he's got top quality uh, all kinds of fish, but I don't think he's a I don't think he would wholesale anything out personally. But uh, all right, guys, go check out Dan's fish, and uh, we'll see ya. And as always, keep tanking along, guys. Peace.